And also with you. And also with you. With you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much that we can gather together and learn uh, more about you and uh, the path that you would lead us on. We thank you for Ryan. We're so grateful for our seminarians and for Ryan and her daughter, Noelle, being part of our community this year. <clears throat> Bless her now as she speaks and shares um, the things she's learned in her life and experiences and Thank you, O oh Lord, that through storytelling, we may always grow closer together and closer to you, and we may be encouraged to tell our stories to others who may need to hear them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, Ryan, welcome. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Um, so I just want to say before I start, uh, if you have questions as I'm going along, you can feel free either to wait until I'm done and then ask them, but or uh, if you want to put them in the chat. If you're like me, sometimes when people are talking on Zoom and I have a question, sometimes I forget <laughs> by the time they're done. And so if you want to put them in the chat, I'll check the chat and follow up too. So either way. Um, so uh, to start, I was born in Fort Worth in 1988. Um, so if you are from Texas or from the DFW area, you probably know that Fort Worth's, uh, little nickname is Cowtown and they like to refer, or we like to refer to ourselves as where the West begins. And so, um, Fort Worth is a very, like, um, really likes to think of itself as really Texas, uh, very much into longhorns and cattle, um, the stockyards downtown, if you've ever been to Fort Worth, the stockyards downtown um, until each day at 11.30 and four. Um, and you could go down and watch them do a little cattle drive and Texas, uh, Fort Worth is very much like a cowboy kind of town. Um, so growing up there was all about rodeo and just being um, really into uh, like Texas stuff, the Kimball and all of that. Um, so my mom joined the military when I was a toddler. And so my mom, stepbrother, stepdad and I ended up moving to Puerto Rico and I lived there until I was five. And then we moved to Maryland. Um, if you've ever been to uh, the Aberdeen Proving Grounds is right outside of Bel Air, Maryland, um, like maybe an hour outside of, or an hour and a half outside of Baltimore. And so we lived in um, Maryland for a few years until I was in second grade. Um, and so I got a taste of East Coast life that I love. And then we moved back to Fort Worth from Maryland when I was like in third grade. And so from third to 12th grade, I lived in uh, Fort Worth with my family. Uh, my mom and my stepdad and my brother, um, and I spent lots of summers, if I wasn't in my dad's house in Dallas, I was at my stepdad's parents' house in Shiner, if you know where that is, um, <laughs> Shiner, Quero, Yoakum, Hallettsville, um, that area. I spent lots of summers down there in the country, uh, having fun, doing, learning uh, Polish dances, like the polka, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, eating lots of sausage, this is great place if you've never been caught down there spent lots of time on the road uh, stopping in Luling it's our favorite place one of our favorite places to stop um, to if you catch it at the right time in the right season you can stop at their watermelon thumping contest and watch these people thump watermelons and then mm -hmm. the best watermelon thump wins it's, it's just a fun time <laughs> um, and so uh, I have I have one brother on my dad on my mom's side. His name is Adam, and then I have two brothers on my dad's side, uh, Devon and Malik. They are all younger than me. I'm the oldest of four, um, and so I grew up in Fort Worth with my parents. And um, then I went to I moved to Irving, which is like a little suburb of Dallas. I went to the University of Dallas, which is a uh, it's a small Catholic liberal arts school. Most people confuse it with UTD, University of Texas at Dallas. Um, in fact, one of my friends in college ended up at UD because he thought he was going to UTD. Um, and then he showed up at UD. Um, a great shock to him. Um, so UD 
was a was a fun kind of fun place to be. Um, I grew up Baptist, so it was uh, it's a it was definitely different than how I grew up because I grew up um, Baptist General Convention of Texas, which is like an offshoot of the Southern Baptist uh, Convention. Um, but I'd gone to Catholic school from third to eighth grade. My mom worked at a Catholic school, Our Mother of Mercy, which is um, on the south side of Fort Worth. And so I ended up at UD because UD um, offered a scholarship to Catholic school students in middle school. Uh, you, if you were in eighth grade, you could write an essay um, that was like, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And so when I was in eighth grade, I wanted to be a neurosurgeon um, like Dan <laughs> and Carson. So I wrote about how I was gonna be a neurosurgeon and how I was gonna change brain surgery. And I guess they were like, that sounds great. And so they offered me a scholarship. So um, when I graduated from eighth grade, I had a full four year, year tuition scholarship to University of Dallas. And so when it was time to like apply to colleges, I was like, I'm gonna apply yeah, here and here and here. And my mom was like, you're, you're, but you're going to UD because it's paid for. And so that's how I ended up at UD. Mom's like, what is wrong with you? Um, we're not wasting money on college applications because you have a full scholarship. And so I ended up at UD um, and it's a great curriculum. Um, it's very based in the ca uh, classics. Uh, and so uh, because of that, they had some uh, alumni who donated land in Italy, it, right outside of Rome in Albano, Dewey Santi. Dewey Santi. Um, and so there's a campus uh, that's for our school in Rome. And so sophomore year, half of the class goes to Rome and lives on campus in Rome uh, in the fall. And the other half goes in the spring. And so spring 2008, I went to Rome for the semester with my friends. Uh, it was about, our, the classes at UD are really small. It's a small school. Uh, and so it was about like 150 of us uh, on campus in Rome. Um, and so we got to travel around every weekend from Thursday to Monday morning, which is really fun to go like to Paris uh, to see like um, Louvre. Uh, I took art history in high school and my number one goal was to see Nike of Samothrace, um, or as the winged, winged victory. And so that was really cool to be able to see that. Um, I went to Barcelona. I just went all over. I once spent the night in uh, Budapest uh, on a park bench because my friend and I planned to go, but we each thought the other person booked our hostel. <laughs> um, we arrived very late at night, only to find that neither of us had booked the hostel. And so we ended up staying in a park on a bench and then getting a hostel the next night. But it was fun. It was fine. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, we, it was just a great time. They took us to Greece as a class. Um, and that is when I realized how American I am because we were in Greece. My friends and I were in Greece. I had friends who were classics majors who had taken... Um, Greek and Latin in high school and, you know, should have known, but we didn't. So we, uh, we were in Delphi. Uh, we had stopped in Delphi for the evening and we wanted to have euros, but none of us until that point knew that euros were called euros. We thought they were called gyros. And so we approached <laughs> the older Greek gentleman who was sitting on a bench and we were like, excuse us. <laughs> could you show us how to get euros? And he was like, euros, and we're, oh, gyros? And he was like, gyros, and we we're like, yes, gyros, we wanna eat some gyros. He was like, oh, oh yeah, euros, I'll show you where to get euros. And we're like, sir, no, 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 we want gyros. We don't want euros, we don't need the ATM, we don't need money, sir. And he kept saying, yes, I'll show you where to get euros. And we were like, no, we don't want euros, sir. We, need, we have money. We want food. <laughs> and then finally, he just starts walking and we follow him and he points at a sign above like a little euro stand and it's like euros and we were like oh euros um and so i always think of that whenever i travel like to really listen uh and try to figure out what's going on in the place and maybe to like you know take some time and know that i don't know everything and to listen to what's happening with the people um and so that was a really great time it's like one of my favorite times at ud is uh traveling around europe with you know, you 150 see? of my best friends. Um, just kidding. Um, and so I graduated from UD in 2010. Gate ago. 
Um, and during the time that I was at UD, I'd also been kind of preaching at my home church in Fort Worth and doing youth ministry. Um, and so my pastor was like, hey, I know you're applying to history programs. I was a history major um, in college. Um, I know you're applying to history grad programs, but I think you should consider applying to seminary. And I said, okay, sure. And so <clears throat> like a week before the app, application was due, I applied to Princeton Theological Seminary. And then I didn't think I was going to get in because it was so late in the application process and I didn't do any interviews. And then uh, I found out like a month or a month and a half later that I had gotten in. It was like, I don't know, like the beginning of the, uh, like right in the middle of the spring semester. And so I got into Princeton and decided to go because I wanted to I thought, oh, what, what, church history is what I'm interested in. Um, and so that's a great place to learn that. And also I can kind of get some ministry skills too. And so I decided to go to Princeton after graduation. So I went to Princeton. I moved there in July of 2010 uh, to take Greek. I took summer Greek, in, which was really nice. It was a great way. Um, it was a small class and it was a great way to get to know the town because we would have Greek from like eight to 12 um, and it was Greek, not to sound like, not to be boastful, but it was very easy to me. Um, and so it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. And so like, every day to walk around Princeton and the, the township and just to get to know it. And it was really nice. And so um, it was a really lovely way to get to know Princeton and to see the campus and to meet people. Uh, and so when school started in September, I was pretty much settled in and um, it was, Princeton was a great time. I would spend, I have friends who lived in New York City and Princeton's like an hour and a half away from, uh, from New York City um, by train for 45 minutes. Um, I would hop on New Jersey Transit uh, and go to New York City for the weekend. Uh, and I would go to Broadway shows. I would spend the weekend with friends in Brooklyn. It was a really great time. And um, I ended up meeting uh, my husband at the time there in Princeton. Uh, he was a student with me. And so uh, we took classes together, uh, traveled together. And um, we ended up having Noel, who some of you have met in 2013, January of 2013. So I. Um, Noelle was born our senior year of seminary um, when we were both seniors preparing to graduate. And so she spent a lot of time in a baby carrier going to class with me or her dad, um, hanging out on campus. So we always say that Noelle also has a seminary degree too. Um, <laughs> and uh, we just, it was a good time. Princeton's a great place. Uh, it's a really nice place for families. It's um, coming from Texas. It was a very different it was definitely a little bit of a shock because in Princeton, um, they respect pedestrians. And so um, you could walk out in the street and cars would just stop. Everyone would stop and like, let me let this person go across the street, which was so new to me because coming from Texas, people are like, why are you walking in the first place? Get into a car. <laughs> um, and so uh, it was just really nice to be able to um, be able to walk around town, to be able to go to orchard and fruit and nice creamy ice cream from Halo Pub, Halo Farm. Um, while I was at Princeton, I worked at a church. I did a field ed at a church in Philadelphia, uh, which is where I really kind of realized that I had gifts for pastoral ministry. Um, I'd assumed mo all of the way through my first year, my junior year of seminary, that I was going to pursue a PhD in church history. I had no intention of really going into ordained ministry um, because I love church history. I love uh, the mystics, studying the mystics. I love translating medieval Latin, um, their, their, their uh, poems and their, um, their kind of like just their encounters, their tales of their encounters with the divine. I really love that. Um, and so I assumed that's what I was going to do. And then I started serving this church and I realized that parish ministry <laughs> is a joy and a delight. Uh, and so um, that kind of tripped me up a little bit because uh, again, I, I was Baptist. Princeton is a Presbyterian seminary. 
but uh, I was uh, I was still serving in the Baptist church. And so um, what I knew was that I wasn't going to stay Baptist. Uh, and so it was a, a moment of trying to figure out what to do. And so, um, but then we had Noel and my husband at the time um, was offered an internship, a three-year internship. There is a, a foundation called the Lilly Foundation, and they offer seminarians, lots of seminarians, um, internships upon graduation to serve at churches um, with a small stipend, and then they provide you housing. And so uh, he got an internship at a church in Brooklyn. And so uh, we moved to Brooklyn right after graduation, um, and we were to there for a while and then he and I decided that um, probably we should not stay married um, and so Noel and I moved to Texas and he stayed in Brooklyn and so then I was like oh I probably need to figure out what's going to happen now and so um, I just started working a job and started searching around for a church that was liturgical um, just because for my time in Catholic school um, through eighth grade and then my time at UD, I knew that what I wanted was a more liturgical church, uh, a church that was focused on the Eucharist um, as, a, as a weekly option. And so, and also wanted a church that was connected to other churches, a part of a larger um, church culture, uh, because uh, while I, I really appreciate a lot of things about the Baptist church, the um, single church structure model where it's your church and the pastor is like the authoritative person of the church. Um, I'd seen where that works really well and that's really great, but I, I also had seen where like there can be abuses of power. And so I knew that I wanted to be a part of something where the ability. And so um, I had a friend in college, one of my good friends is Anglican. And so she said, why don't you come over to this church, visit me at church in Dallas. Uh, and so uh, her church was an Anglican church and I really liked it, but I didn't um, like everything about it. And so, and it was also an hour away in Dallas. Uh, and so I looked for churches in Fort Worth and I found Trinity Episcopal Church in Fort Worth, which was close to my mom's house. And so I started going to Trinity uh, and then I thought this is a this is the place for me. The Episcopal Church is the place for me. And so as I was kind of getting settled in there, I was the program that I was working for was a grant program and we weren't sure we were going to get a grant extended for the for the next year and so I started looking for another job and I happened to be on uh, a website for nonprofits and I found a church in Houston that was Episcopal they were looking for a youth men, uh, missioner and that was exactly my line of work uh, and an after school program director which is what I was currently doing and so I, I applied I wasn't I didn't think that they were going to hire me because I was so new to the Episcopal Church um, but they did <laughs> and so I started working at St. Stephen's in Houston in 2014 in August and I became um, a confirmed communicant of the Episcopal Church in December 2014 um, and so uh, I worked at St. Stephen's until June 30th of this year. Um, I started as a youth missioner and director of their after school program. But when I got there, the after school program wasn't thriving. And so my job the first year was to figure out what to do to help it to thrive and to kind of meet the needs of students um, and their families. And so um, I had this crazy idea. I said, hey, what do we start a makerspace? And they were like, what's a makerspace? And I was like, uh, it can be whatever you want it to be. And so uh, we applied for some grants. They gave some funds. Um, and we used the community building that was already on campus to create a makerspace for uh, fourth through eighth graders to come after school and learn how to do hand tools. So they learn how to saw, they learn how to solder, they learn how to do uh, you know, basic things like nail a nail or drill a pilot hole um, because lots of students don't, uh, you know, kids don't know how to do that anymore. They learn how to sew, um, they learn 3D printing and laser cutting, so computer automated design. Um, and then just one off things, uh, there was a scholars program that we had where local artists and uh, experts in um, different fields could come and teach some things. So like they learned how to do um, 
music, um, electronic music. They learned how to do lithography from this uh, uh, guy who worked at uh, the Printing Museum in Houston. Um, they, all kinds of things. And so that program is still running. Uh, I was the first director of that program and co-founder of that program. And we had lots of students come from um, different parts of Houston to participate. It was really fun because um, we approached it from a different way um, in that um, creativity is inherently spiritual. And so part of it was a STEM approach, which is really popular in school right now um, but the other part was we were calling it steams so science technology engineering arts mathematics and spirituality and so a lot of our conversation was centered around um, what it means to be an artist in the community what it means to be a maker within the community um, and when do you offer your gifts to community like when do when do artists make things uh, to benefit their community or to teach their community and then when do artists make things for themselves or for their own kind of like profit because they're they're working you know lots lots of artists are working artists and so um we would have little and seeing the kids make stuff and put all of their time and effort into it and then have to decide if they were going to offer it to the community or if they were going to sell it and for how much was always interesting because you would have a kid who would, you know, nail, just like nail a, a little nail to a, a, a wooden board and be like, this is $20. Thank you. Um, sorry, I seem to have gotten kicked off. Um, uh, I don't know where was. Oh, um, so yeah, um, just watching kids kind of like learn how to cultivate their gifts is really a joy. Um, and then as I was doing that, uh, we had a chaplain that took a different position. At, from the day school. And so they were like, you already work with so many of the students at the day school um, and you have, you've been to seminary, why don't you become our chaplain here? And I was like, sure, um, I don't know, but okay. And so uh, I became the chaplain at the day school. Uh, St. Stephen's day school um, serves about 230 children, um, grades uh, ages 15 months to eighth grade. And so um, we will have weekly level chapels for, you know, toddlers and um, preschoolers and then school age students. And it was during, it was at that time that I kind of was like, oh, I think, I think I'm feeling called to the priesthood. Um, watching having students in the after school program and kind of helping them cultivate gifts and then praying with students and their families. Um, and kind of like watching their families grow, uh, sitting with stu students in their families who have had deaths in their family. Um, I came on as the chaplain right as Harvey hit, uh, like the month, at the beginning of the month, of, beginning of August, and then at the end of August, Harvey hit Houston really badly. And so um, serving them during that time and then just beyond that um, and praying for each of my students and their families every day just kind of created a shift. And so, so I started talking with my boss, our rector about it. And she said, you should just, you should go to discovery retreat. You should discern. And so I talked to my priest, my, uh, I'm a member at St. Luke the Evangelist uh, with Francine as our priest. And so I started talking to Francine and she put together a discernment committee for me. Um, and I went through discernment and then um, went to the com the the first interview of the commission and found out in I guess February right before every, all of COVID happened that uh, I'd been ex, uh, accepted as a postulate and so then I ended up moving to Austin uh, in August to start at Seminary of the Southwest uh, and it was just a really fun and joyous occasion um, it's been a kind of like a 
longer meandering journey than some folks, but it's also been a really great time to settle into the Episcopal Church and feel like it's it's my home um, and get to know it in a really deep way. So thank you for having me. Um, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Wow, <laughs> I, I love your story. Wow. <laughs> um, I, I love how so many things, um, it's like you have a spirit of adventure and you go with the next thing and um, all kinds of wonderful things happen. So it's great, great to have you here. Yeah, you've really had an interesting life, right? And, and I'm anxious to get in person with you to tell you where there's a place close to Marble Falls where you can go polka. <laughs> Good. Right. I haven't polkaed in a, in a long time, so that would oh, be well, no, I taught Karen to polka there. It's a place called Anhalt, and Anhalt oh. is an old German dance hall, and the Germans celebrate, uh, they have a festival in the fall for uh, when they harvest the crops, and they have a festival in the spring when they plant. And as all deal, if you'll remember from Snyder, they have the benches around the edge, and you sit around the edge, and then and then when I was little, my parents would go there and I would sleep under the bench. I was about your daughter's age or a little younger. And while we were there, they had the state champions of polka there dancing. We went last October. And then I taught Karen how to polka. And now she's a poking fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Brian. Yeah. Yes, well, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Well, we hope this year is a blessing for you. And I know all of us are eager to get to know you and to help you in any way we can. I'm so happy to get to know you guys uh, via Zoom and hopefully soon in person. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much. I know we're probably supposed to end, but thank you. Many blessings to all for the day, and we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.